welcome to the GFL 2020 Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Green Energy on CBC. I am Jamal Pachel, alongside Brianna Kaminsky. As we get set to bring you this new sports quarter final, the last, the fourth quarter final. This one between the number three seed AD West champs, USC Reds, the number six seed OUA finalists, the Toronto Barnes Blues. And a quick peek now at the. Uh, at the bracket and how things shook up earlier today. It was an upset in the standings when it comes to the seeding as Montreal Cataban took a 4-2 win over UBC. That they did, yeah, it was a very exciting game. Very, very evenly match, right up until the end. Montreal was, of course, able to come and get that insurance goal to put them up 4-2. As always, we're here to play for a chance to get into the championship bracket. That is what UNB hopes to do. They were able to do it the first time they came to Nationals in 2022, falling in the bronze medal game that year. But Toronto as well, they were toppled as the number one seed last year. They are looking for some redemption and getting back into the fight for a medal. We'll find out after this. Opening face-off is next after the break, live from the University of Saskatchewan in Saskatoon. You are watching the GFL 2024 U Sports Women's Hockey Championships presented by Connect Energy on CBC. We are looking for talented players to join our team. The Health Sciences Association of Saskatchewan is a union representing an all-star team of over 4,000 specialized healthcare professionals, giving it their all in over 30 professions within Saskatchewan. Our members are geared up and at the drop of a puck are ready to help you get your health back in the game. You'll find our members in hospitals, emergency services, communities, and long-term care. Your hometown team, ready to assist you in reaching your health goals. HSAS are proud sponsors of the gold medal game in support of the Saskatoon Food Bank. Sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visit shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it.
welcome inside Merlis Belcher Place in Saskatoon. You are watching the GFL Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy on CBC. I am Daniela Botticelli on the call tonight alongside Brianna Kaminsky. And this is the fourth final quarter final. So the, la the last two teams in the tournament to have their first taste at the ice. And of course, this 2024 Nationals experience. Starting in net for the lower seed, Toronto Varsity Blues. They come in as the OUA finalist. It's Erica Fryer. She played in all seven postseason games for this team. It was a big part of getting them here, including a game two pivotal must win. You know, it's a double overtime over Queens, and that's what helped them propel to this eventual national appearance. That was back in the quarterfinals there. And then in net for the UNB Reds, Kendra Woodland, fifth year. She's incredible, made 39 saves for the eight US title, the third year in a row for the Reds. To take the top prize in their conference. We get set now for puck drop. Peyton Hargreaves, the captain for the Reds, gets the face-off win. Nearly finds Lillian George right away. George, top scorer for the Reds. Also named the first team All-Canadian. But here comes Taylor Tressler. And just a bit of an unfortunate slip there. But Taylor Tressler, the leading scorer and captain for the Varsity Blues. She's one to watch. She was incredible in the postseason as well for their team. Coming away with four points in those seven games. Both these two teams heavily leaning on their defense through the playoffs to get to this moment tonight. Now weaving in Eileen McHugh and Howard. Howland, rather. Let's lose Abby Howland. Key player for Toronto. And there, another test. Woodland shrugs that one off easy. Still back in the red zone. We got the first taste of pressure in this game. Ali McEwen now tries a backhand shot in close on Woodland. You say two heavy, heavy defensive teams. I'm seeing nothing but pressure right off the stop, start here from Toronto. Which we also anticipated could happen, right? Yeah. Because when a team plays a certain way through playoffs, when you're coming now to the national stage, you want to show something a little different. Saw with the Huskies actually coming out very, very strong. There's a chance. Cole. Just shooting it from the point and trying to create some second chances for her team. Both these teams averaging around 30 shots per game through the regular season. In fact, on paper, very similar. Oh, that one skims by now. The Reds have a chance here in the offensive zone and that one trickles through. Marissa Valla even finding some time to get some physical playoff. And she sends it back into the Varsity Blue zone. We're seeing a little bit more of a physical style of play through this tournament than we had been seeing in the regular season, which makes it all that more exciting to watch. Well, and that could have been something below the goal line to right in front. Donna Sackos, one to watch as well. A lot of experience on this Varsity Blues team. Again, they came in as the top seed last year in this tournament toppled in the quarterfinal by the eventual national title winner of the Mountain Royal University Cougars. So a little bit of redemption on their mind too, but just getting into that championship bracket goes a long way. Now getting caught up on the far wall. Nikki McDonald, another strong scorer for Toronto. Trussler in fast. Hargreaves, now Eagles finds it along the blue line. Down low, it's taken away that time by Mackenzie Keenan, another UNB Red named to the first team All-Canadian. It's a big honor, George and Keenan saying to have two members of our team. This program just got into the AUS six seasons ago. It's a big deal. Now Nystrom getting caught up. Time here in the neutral zone as we started off with 
some sustained pressure over in the UNB end. Neither of these teams have had a chance just yet to really get into the tournament mojo, so to speak, until this game. And now, with speed, coming in around the net, taking it wide, trying to drop it back. Loom, far side. Okay, trying to maintain possession right near the net. And there was a quick work by Katie McKenna to get by, weaving through. Rather than the straightaway, what a shot into the glove of Kendra Woodland. Katie McKenna end to end. Beautiful, beautiful play, taking that puck all the way in. Of course, great save there by Woodland, who looks real sharp in those all black hats. Nice to see those making a little bit of a comeback. Rihanna, you have goaltending background, and this is going to be a night where both of these goaltenders are going to want to shine, knowing that the other has also had a, had a tremendous postseason to get to where they are. Now drops, sends it over with speed. O'Neal rims it around, looking for support. Far side can't get it. Ashley Delahaye. Not past her, her sister Taylor. There's a shot into the netting. Oh yeah, there's a few stats lines like that. Always great to have those family connections and both of them playing there. They're from Markham, Ontario. Playing close to home as well, Toronto Varsity News. And there are 14 players on the UNP team who are from Ontario as well so lots of connections there the reds able to win that draw in the defensive zone but oh that will send it all the way right back emma irwin doing the work there now olivia hilton she rooms it around and while these big board passes seem to skirt by the the opponents it's not always catching their own teammate. Now a big opportunity for the Reds. Sharp angle. Keenan has it. She's going to drive it in front. And that one almost. Erica Fryer diving for it. Beautiful eyes on that one by Erica Fryer to dive in and get that rebound as there were a couple close calls there. That sharp angle shot almost looked like it went a little bit five-four, but fantastic look for her to get on top of that puck. Big opportunity now for the Reds getting this offensive zone faceoff. Captain Peyton Hargraves, third year out of Whitby, Ontario. Playing for the UNB Reds. She has seven power play goals on the season, by the way. Hargraves finds Smith. Certainly feeling the pressure from Toronto. Nikki McDonald getting in there on the forecheck. Now back around the net of Erica Fryer, Lillian George. Sending it back, getting spun around this time. Hustler finds McKnight down low. Toronto with the change, and McKnight keeps it deep in the red zone. Lots of UNB fans in Saskatchewan. Now Lillian George has some space, and she gets squeezed out, stopped. Well, on the move. Board battle. Strome loses it. Now McEwen, she'll take the shot. Woodland with a big save. Kylie McEwen, she's got a dangerous shot. She's got some good speed coming down that ice as well. Toronto keeping the pressure on pretty early on here. Seeing a little bit of a tip that way. They're leading in shots currently, three to one. Yeah, Eileen McEwen, familiar with six goals in the regular season, and then two in the post. Including a big two-goal game, actually, against Queens. Their uh, game three, that was a must-win in order to come through that. Pass into the slot. Doesn't go anywhere, Erica Fryer locks that down. 
be good to see a little bit more UMB action down in the offensive end here. We haven't seen too much out of them. Uh, of course, a couple defensive teams, but it'll be interesting to see what they can put together if they can stay down and keep pressure on Toronto. The Reds just trying to keep it in the zone here, stay on the attack. Toronto digging out. Now the Delahays, they lose the butt Carter. Trying to find some space in the neutral zone. We'll flip it down to Fryer and the Reds. Trying to just can't keep it in his own. Ashley Delahaye back to Taylor this time. There's a shot. It goes wide. Eagles now. Eagles coming in. Toronto with uh, three years experience with the York Lions. And now Delahaye through traffic through three UNB Reds. And it'll work for the team from New Brunswick. It feels like we haven't had many whistles in a while. What's the rule on hand passes to get it blown down like that? Not 100 percent certain. I think if you make a forward motion with it, you can grab it and bring it down, but I think it's that forward motion that causes the result. We've certainly seen both, right? We've seen yeah. the in-game and allowing it to settle down and continue. So a neutral zone face-off. Still scoreless here in the first period. Now Reiner backhand. That's pushed aside by Fryer. So we'll go the other way with speed. Emma Elders, what a poke check by Smith. Again, these two teams know their defense really well, but in terms of any type of offense being set up by the Reds, Rihanna. We're not really seeing anything just yet. So they're playing very well defensively, but they you can't play defense all game. You've got to put some offense into it. So they've done a lot of dump and chase, but just not quite working for them. Toronto able to grab that puck and get it back down the ice. And Scott goes all the way down. There's a shot from George. It's kick saved by Fryer. Hargreaves tries to get a piece of it. But once again, the Varsity Blues feeling a little repetitious at this point in the first period, just out from behind their own goal line. Trying to bring it back out. They'll try yet again, Chan. And now in the slot, George. The Reds, of course, will look to Lillian George to be that goal scorer. She has been a great performer through the regular season. 18 goals. And plus 27. Things like that is fantastic. They've got a few players that are that way. Peyton Hargreave as well, plus 21 in the regular season. Mackenzie Keenan is plus 18. Players like that that are able to put up a lot of points are going to be key here in this game for the Reds. Well, Sydney Oideman will take this face off on the attack. It's getting pushed already to the end boards. And it just feels like every time they get that chance to maybe get a jump, Force to the outside, Toronto. Effective keeping the Reds out of the middle, but in fast, and what a takeaway here. Milton will bring it back below. Pressure on Murdoch. Now a chance in front. Eileen McEwen is right there. But so is a pack of UNB Reds. There's lots of uh, slipping going on on the ice. Now a chance through the legs, and there's a penalty coming. Riley Strom had a chance here, and it was looking dangerous. And so it felt for the Varsity Blues, Abby Howland, like she needed to commit that penalty. And I mean, take your penalty if you need, but make sure that your penalty kill is going to be able to kill it off for your team. Opportunity now for the Reds to be the first on the board in a game that 
started out kind of tentatively, definitely defensively. They have the upper hand on the power play, coming in 26.6% during the regular season. In the postseason, they went two for 18, so around 11.1%. However, they've got their uh, they've got their strong unit out there. 25 power play goals as a team through the regular season. Compare that with Toronto's power play. They came, they're coming in at 7.4. So obviously it's not power play to power play, but just some perspective on how big this could be for the Reds. It definitely could be. We haven't seen a lot of offensive zone play out of them in this first almost 10 minutes, but with a power play like that, if they bring their regular season one in, it could be very productive for them. Meanwhile, Toronto, they've gone 21 for 23 in the postseason on the penalty kill. And that's through seven postseason games. They'll be looking to stay perfect here. Keep it scoreless. Coming in though, Keenan. He's gonna find some space. Back down low. And what a move by Captain Trussler. She has scored shorthanded as well. She's gonna take a shot. Nearly had a second chance in the slot. Howland trying to get her blade on it. Now Hargreaves. She'll take it up near side. Looking for Nystrom. As Carter will settle it back. UNB trying to be patient. She's going to go far side this time. Just take a point shot. Why not? As Cole rushes to it. Now Cham. And back Nystrom. Smith. And loose. A big chance here as Elders tries to win that foot race. Strom hoping to go through the legs there. Can't do it. Hilton with pressure initially. Now McKenna down low. 30 seconds left on this UNB Reds power play, the first of the game. And a board battle. That'll bring the whistle. We haven't seen too many of those board battles uh, yet called up by the refs. They're really letting these girls battle along the boards and in the corners, which is pretty exciting to see. And just tough, gritty players going through those corners. Nobody's really backed down or has gotten scared at all so far this tournament. Captains meet. Power play face-off goes UMB's way. George pressured by Monty. Now Hargreaves, she's gonna find a lane here, try her uh, teammate rather. Now Keenan, what a shot block. Putting it all on the line, McDonald. Trying again this time, bit of a softer pass. Hoping to find some friendly faces in the slot. Abby Howland though, fresh out of the penalty box, coming in. What a pass to McDonald and what a bigger play by Keenan. Speed out of these Toronto players. They really know when to kick it into that fifth year. Eagles. So go to the stretch pass here. Finds Ashley Delahaye. He's out there with Taylor yet again. And now getting in close to Kendra Woodland. Just feeling that consistent pressure from behind from the Reds, now a chance, what a shot. Woodland turns it away. Support takes it all the way to the perimeter. Now Brokenshire, oh, and in front, Graubarger. What a shot, they score! Toronto Varsity Blues with a perfect penalty kill. And then it's Ashley Delahaye who puts it away for the first. Slot, and she just finds all that open net on the blocker side of Woodland. What a great goal, great patience on that play. When you get a goal pass, Kendra Woodland, what do you need to do to, to get a, a veteran goaltender like that? Just like that, you know, you've got to be patient, look for those openings, and keep getting shots on. You haven't seen too, too many. There's another so one, yeah, there's another one right at the high slot by Elders. It's not always a there. Another one shoveled back this time. Toronto with the pressure. Vala 
with speed. So much so she can't quite control the puck and that would have been offside otherwise, just settling back. And Eileen McEwen in transition, can't get it. Now Jackson tries to test fire, another shot block there. Toronto is dialed in on defense and now have the one goal lead. There's a shot, they score, Mackenzie Keenan does it! Off the crossbar and down, UMB ties things up right away. Obviously, not, not wanting to stay tied for too long. Getting that upper hand was so key, especially when you have a goaltender like Kendra Woodland. One with so much experience, one that has worn the Maple Leaf, winning gold with Team Canada in the World University Games last year. Now McKenna, she'll walk it through the slot through the traffic block by Hargreaves. And Eagles with a good play. Still can't keep it off the red stick. Now Scott going cross crease there with the pass. And the red starting to feel warmed up here on offense too. Off the glass pass, Keenan tucks it back in for the Reds. These Reds yeah, definitely heating up after they put up that goal on the board. Still sticky to the end boards. Eagles and McKnight. O'Neal finds some space. Cross eyes pass to Keenan. Another shot, and there was a bounce to it as well. Gives Toronto some space. Now a chance on the other end. McDonald with a shot. Trussler. Collects it near side. He's right in front of the net. Toronto finding plenty of chances to get in very close. Very, very close. And multiple players making their way that close into the net. Chester trying to get a shot off in the slot. Now Chan. Varsity Blues getting time to set up here. And as I say that, the Reds now work to clear it. Nystrom will carry it over. Quick little poke by Taylor Delahaye. And the Reds still working out of their zone. Murdoch. And just a quick look back at those goals. We're going to head to break shortly. But the first goal, Ashley Delahaye, Sophie Grobarger, and Taylor Delahaye with the assist. Then Mackenzie Keenan, April Reiner, and Haley Jackson will be back with more. We're tied at one. You're watching U Sports on CBC. into real solutions. Because whatever path you choose, here, you'll make an impact and get ready to change the world. Make your change. Discover your story at Waterloo.
you're watching the 2024 U Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy. 420 left in this fourth quarter final of the tournament. Now Lillian George takes a shot on Erica Fryer. She's locked in, but we are tied at one. UNB getting that equalizer right after Toronto opened up scoring. Honestly, less than a minute. Yeah, just trying to do some quick math there. Less than a minute after the uh, the scoring opened. And just so quick, uh, I think it's going to be a lot of back and forth this way. We're seeing it with the play in itself. They're just up and down the ice, back and forth. And now we're seeing it on the scoreboard as well. Sydney Oideman battling for it. She's got support. Strom getting caught up. Hilton seeing a lot of board play. Only one power play so far, and the team did not score on that one. That one went to UNB Reds. Again, in the regular season, we're sitting something like 25, 26% for their power play. Yeah, and I mean, that, it's tough when this is also your first game of the tournament, and you're still trying to get going. But to have both teams on the board, teams that through the postseason this year have been defensive strongholds, more so now Francesca Monti. She's got Howland. They get the puck into the neutral zone. Back on the stick of UNB Smith to Nystrom. Chase is on. Boydeman in the corner. Another chance. Almost like the timing is just a little off, but those two keep connecting in front. Race for it. McEwen with a shot flies up high into the netting. So Toronto, though, Rihanna, has through the first period shown that they can get to the puck just a little faster than they would be. All skate. Holy smokes. Like I said before, they really know when to kick it into fifth gear, and they're winning those foot races consistently, which is going to be very dangerous for the UNB defense, and they're going to have to really watch themselves on that one. This time, Varsity Blues now from the point. Cole, there's a shot through traffic. Trying to work the patience there. Vala pushing over Cole, the back to it. Far side now. Working from one end to the other. It's a taxing effort. They'll go at it one more time. That one, Kendra Woodland in the glove. UNB just really hasn't been able to make a successful breakout consistently so far here in the first period. I don't know if it's just a little bit of nerves coming into it, but their breakout is not looking very, very good at the moment. So maybe they can just shake it off a little bit, you know, get the first period out of the way. Fortunately, it's a tie game, but they got to work on that a little bit more. And what's impressive with this UNB Reds team three straight AUS titles, but this year, eight rookies. And that's because that original UNB Reds AUS team that came back in in 2018, well, all those players, many of them graduating last year. And it was an emotional Nationals tournament for the team because of that, including their head coach, Sarah Hillworth, who is on maternity leave. And so Kyle McDonald is the interim coach right now for the Reds. He's been a big part of the school's program on the men's side as a goaltending coach, but also with the women at the World University Games last year. So many interconnecting features of that. I did hear a rumor that Sarah is here this weekend. She watching. is. She was oh, at the award show where Lillian George, of course, picked up those first team honors, and there's a chance she'll just pot it to Erica Fryer, turns it away, but keeps it behind and close by, McDonald digging in for Toronto. Just tracking that puck all the way through. Now Lauren Omoto. Toronto so good along those boards. And to play cleanly as well in this game so far. Both teams fairly disciplined minus that one tripping penalty. And you could totally argue that sometimes you, you gotta take that to avoid the scoring chance. And when someone's on a breakaway like that and you're gonna lose the foot race, maybe not the worst penalty to take. The Reds 
They're on the attack, but being pressured and pressed. Trying to create some space now. Murdoch will take it near side. Dump it down. Nystrom. Check that Strom, rather. Going for it from the point now. Again, just... There's a shot, it's long. Lost a little bit of power as it trickled towards the net of Erica Fryer. Now Delahaya. Brokenshire, quick to it. Toronto opportunistic on that, but so is Carter. And Chan looking for room. Fans it, Murdoch. So despite getting plenty of touches from both these teams, Rihanna, in terms of overall possession, how are you seeing this game? I'm seeing a little bit more going Toronto's way, that's for sure. They've spent more time in the offensive end. Hewlin Chan, that soft shot stopped in the slot. George feeds it through, and once again, the Varsity Blues just flip it right back. And there is the buzzer in what has felt like the fastest first period so far in this tournament. Coming now in the fourth quarter final, the final team here needing to determine where they want to go. Championship bracket or consolation and tied at one for the first intermission. We'll be back with more. You're watching U Sports on CBC, Chase the Glory. girl there's a dream gliding on the ice scoring the winning goal greatness isn't just found in the big leagues it starts right here in our communities at these ranks with these girls here's to the dreamers the believers and the ones who lace up their skates Saskatoon Mitsubishi empowering dreams one stride at a time parce que le sport, ça se regarde en direct. Soyez au cœur de l'action avec les web diffusions en direct d'événements sportifs. In the heart of Saskatoon, where the winters are long, hockey is not just a sport, it's a way of life. Behind every team, there's a community that supports them. At Connect Energy, we're proud to be a Saskatoon-based company that powers local businesses with natural gas options to help them thrive. We're excited to sponsor the 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship. Join us in supporting local businesses and the future of hockey. Hey, U Sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visit the shop.usports.ca to profit of the promotion of the week of the collection Nike Team. Because the sport is also des des parcours inspirant. A regard unique sur l'humain derrière l'athlète. Exploiter mon potentiel maximum, c'est un truc de fou. Découvrez les récits numériques et vidéos de Podium sur RadioCanada.ca et sur l'appli Info. U Sports on CBC in our coverage of the GFL 2024 Women's National Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy. We are in Saskatoon. First intermission between UNB Reds and Toronto Varsity Blues tied at one. Every year, U Sports celebrates its best student athletes and coaches honoring major accomplishments in each sport. So here are the nominees and winners of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year and U Sports Rookie of the Year. The nominees for U Sports Women's Hockey Rookie of the Year are a nomination for the Prix de la Recrue de l'année en hockey féminin U Sport 2024, des sports universitaires de l'Atlantique from the AUS, Ireland McCloskey, St. Francis Xavier University, Université St. Francis Xavier, du Réseau du Sport étudiant du Québec from the RCQ, Gabrielle Santerre, 
Université Bishops University. Du sport universitaire de l'Ontario, from the OUA, Abby Lunny, Nipissing University, Université de Nipissing, et de l'Association West Canadienne, from Canada West, Jalen Morris, University of British Columbia, Université de la Colombie-Britannique. La lauréate du prix recrue de l'année en hockey féminin U Sport est The winner of the U Sports Rookie of the Year in Women's Hockey is Gabrielle Santer, Université Bishops University. Here are the nominees for the 2024 Fox 40 U Sports Women's Hockey Coach of the Year Award. Voici les candidats pour le prix de l'entraîneur de l'année Fox 40 U Sport. Des sports universitaires de l'Atlantique, from the AUS, Chris Larad, Université St. Mary's University. Du réseau du sport étudiant du Québec, from the RSEQ, Julie Chu, Université Concordia University. Du sport universitaire de l'Ontario, from the OUA, Katie Mora, Université de Guelph. University of Guelph, et de l'Association West Canadienne, from Canada West, Scott Rivet, Université Mount Royal University. Le ou la lauréate du prix Fox 40 en tant qu'entraîneur de l'année est, the winner of the Fox 40 Coach of the Year Award is, Julie Chu, Université Concordia University. between New Brunswick and Toronto in the first intermission. You're watching U Sports on CBC. I just love the game and I'm just so thankful. Feel every hit, point, and celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline. Our passionate team unlocks a world of possibilities with digital broadcasting made simple, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. Proudly Canadian, ISI Live, be there. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visit the shop.usports.ca for the promotion of the promotion of the collection Nike Team. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. U Sports on CBC, presented by Les Championnats U Sports à Radio Canada. Une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the government of Canada. Nike, just do it. Fettler. Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. Pierre, partenaire des prix de l'entraîneur de l'année U Sports. 
Theraburn, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979. Partenaire du sport universitaire depuis 1979. Baron, exclusive supplier of U-Sports championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusif des bagues des championnats U-Sports. By Connect Energy, proud presenting partner of this U-Sports championship. Par Connect Energy, yeah, partenaire de ce championnat U-Sports. And by GFL, proud title partner of the 2024 GFL U-Sports Women's Hockey Championship. Par GFL, yeah, partenaire en titre du championnat de hockey féminin U-Sports 2024. Taking a look back at the big moments of the first period here in the first intermission, I am Daniela Ponticelli alongside Brianna Kaminsky. And Toronto got on the board first. Ashley Delahaye, assisted by Sophie Grawbarger and Taylor Delahaye. But then it was just 49 seconds later that Mackenzie Keenan answered back for the Reds. And Mackenzie Keenan has, a, has had a tremendous season so far, a second year out of uh, Midhurst, Ontario, and she was named to the first team All-Canadian, and she was helped out by April Reiner and Haley Jackson. So, a little bit of chemistry on two lines tonight, one for each seat team, but the defense has been on point, and taking a look at it, nine shots each on goal, but Rihanna pointed out the blocked shots and the fact that the Reds have really had the edge. They're huge, and it's going to help out your goaltender. It's helping out your team. Reds have had eight blocked shots, so they're really able to get their bodies in front of that puck, which is fantastic. They're reading the plays off Toronto, which are a very, very fast team. But also, we're seeing a bit of a breakdown in the Reds' defense. You know, they're getting those Toronto players really tight in close on the crease, not what they're wanting to see. So I can imagine that's what's being talked about in the dressing room is tighten up. Don't let those girls, don't let the varsity Reds varsity blues story walk through our defense quite as much and of course on that other side that Mackenzie Keenan goal for UNB beautiful she had nothing but net so maybe they're saying Erica watch your angles a little bit more prior you got to come up off of that goal line a little bit because she had nothing but net on that glove side and that is not one as a goaltender you want to be letting in you should have that glove save every single time well, here's the thing now. Historically, these two, if they allow a goal, that's pretty much it yeah. <laughs> when it comes to high octane games, uh, important games. Erica Fryer, in the regular season, 18 wins, eight losses. Her goals against average 1.39. So she's sitting pretty there. And then Kendra Woodland, she came through the regular season with a 1.99 goals against average. And you just seem to really well respected. And of course, well-played goaltenders. They have the minutes, they've racked it up, and that is a, a big difference here. Woodland did get the bulk of the heavy lifting for UNB, and deservedly so. She's a fifth year, but in her sixth year as a student. So she's also had the time to kind of develop and grow, and they're certainly hoping that she will take them back into the championship bracket. 
Of course, and if she can do all the work possible on that back end, but the UNB offense needs to produce as well. Fortunately, they did get that goal, but Toronto had the edge through that first period, taking way more time with the puck. They spent a lot more down in the UNB end, and again, UNB really needs to be a little bit better on the breakout, spending a little bit more time in the offensive end and not just waiting to get an icing call and the drop all the way down in the Toronto end. And I just look at these two teams. They each played a double overtime game in the postseason that they came away with the win with. And they were both pivotal games. So for Toronto, it was their quarterfinal game too. They wouldn't even be here if they didn't win that game, right? They need, they knew, oh goodness, this could all end right here in the quarterfinals of the OUA. And so they came through a double overtime there and Erica Fryer was absolutely the hero in that game whereas Kendra Woodland did the 39 saves to help her team out in a double overtime to win the AUS title so they would have come through any way to get here but to have the upper hand to have the higher seed and of course get your third title in three years that is such a source of pride for this program big time oh most definitely it is Speaking of overtime, our format fortunately is a little bit different. We only do 10 minutes of overtime, four on four play, before going to a shootout in these regulation games. Of course, that changes when we get to the gold it does, medal. yeah. It'll just be back to back to back play. Yeah, even strength as well in the championship round. We'll get through all of that if we get there. So far, the three games prior to this, didn't need to go into overtime. So uh, although it did feel a little bit like that at the start, well, not just the start through the second for uh, UBC and Montreal, but is the Caraban who were uh, who were victorious 4-2 win and technically an upset in the seating, the seating as well. CBC Sports is home, is the home of university sports in Canada. The best U Sports men's volleyball team will battle for the 2024 U Sports Men's Volleyball Championship from Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario. You can catch the action exclusively on CBC Gem, cbcsports.ca, the CBC Sports app, and CBC Sports YouTube. U Sports on CBC, chase the glory. And that's what the teams are trying to do here. Now, Toronto and UMB have actually faced each other once before and that was just last year on this national stage. It was a 4-1 loss for the Reds to the Varsity Blues, but the seeding was a little bit different last year. They were both championship uh, teams, but that was the semifinal in the consolation bracket. There were lots of upsets. Yeah, there was lots of upsets. Of course, number one seed Toronto getting toppled, and that led to the meeting of the Reds, but they were also relegated into that consolation bracket so it, they have so much that they want to come back to see what happens um, one of these teams is going to be going to the medal round one to the consolation bracket so good ticket to punch tonight now the winner of this will take on the Montreal Caravan in the 7 p.m. local 6 p.m. Pacific 9 p.m. Eastern game tomorrow night. That's the final semifinal to determine who's heading into the gold medal game. The team that is defeated in this matchup will head into the second consolation game. Like UBC. Yeah, they'll take on UBC. And that game goes 1 p.m. local noon Pacific and 3 p.m. Eastern. Officials meeting in the middle. On the call with you, Daniela Ponticelli, alongside Rihanna Kaminsky. Toronto in blue, McKnight wins it clean. Omoto sends it down. As these two teams know what's on the line. As mentioned, meeting just last year in the Constellation semifinal. And it was a win for Toronto, 4-1. Lillian George comes through. She's going to take a shot stopped by Fryer. My goodness. Flexibility on oh, that yeah. save. Wow. She folded in the best way. Yep. That is the compliment there. Yes. <laughs> no. yes. That is a great way to put it. 
don't think I've seen a goaltender get that close to the ice in a while. Wow. In a great way. Yep. And she's back up and moving again. No <laughs> harm, no foul after that nice stretch. Had it right on top of her pad, covered it up. Erica also a fifth year goaltender out of Ontario. He played for the London Junior Devilettes, a very proud program. As Eagles can't quite get to the puck first, but it was great work on that back check to get around. Far side, now the Reds will work it. Side as they just kind of couldn't get that third pass going there through the breakout. They get one, they get two, but it seems like that third one is eluding the Reds a little bit so far in this game. Approaching here the first minute of the second period and trying to get a sense of how these two teams, maybe what they discussed in that locker room, knowing how closely matched they are on paper. And right now they are tied at one, came into this period Tied with nine shots apiece as well. Vala, nearly intercepting, gets it. Carter, and a quick stick save by Fryer. The intensity and the, and the intention on these shots feeling a little soft at the moment. Now through Grauberg Barger, she's got an assist on the night already. Sort of floats into the end boards. Now has another chance to feed it up, but Taylor Delahaye can't connect, and that's a great steal for the Reds this time as they come through. Going all the way to the outside, though. Can't get past Omoto. Taylor Delahaye has got an assist. Not sure where that pass was going, but Omoto helps her out and gets it back into the offensive zone. Toronto just trying to regroup, but now the Reds, they're going to take the middle, go far side this time. Jackson sends it around. Broken Shire. Now at Thanissakos, though, for Toronto. As Erwin, she gets slipped up at center ice. Just such back and forth play like we saw in the first. Not really anything happening either way so far. Just a couple minutes into the second period here. Now Emma Elder is looking to change that. Forced well behind the net of Kendra Woodland. Francesca Monti. Holding it down by the line, but the Reds have another chance. George doing the work herself. Woodland will play it. Finds Eagles far side. Back to Elders. George was battling for it. And this UNB team certainly looks to George to lead them in every facet on the scoreboard as well. Now Tressler, she does the same for Toronto. 5-2, a big presence on the ice. And around they go. McDonald was swarming this line. Very effective. They have 12 points between them here in the postseason so far. Not at Nationals yet. These defense looking a little bit tighter, keeping those Toronto players more towards the outside, unlike they were able to do in the first period. Now Tressler, she had room fanned on it. Another block shot for UNB. They had the edge on that through the first frame. Chan finds McEwen. They don't connect. Rush to it. And right in front, Woodland. That was such a fast play. Kind of like a funny bounce coming in and very, very fortunately, she was able to keep it out of the goal net there. Almost looked like it had kind of, you know, gone off her and maybe gotten a little bit close to that line, but she stayed tight on top of it. So the Reds able to defend from that face off. But McEwen, hoping to keep pressure for Toronto. And just as quickly taken away by the Reds. Trying to find some room in the slot. What a shot. Stays on the red stick this time. Smith. She sends it back for Oideman. Abby Howland. 
she fires it down, not quite from the point this time. No redirection, and that allows the Varsity Blues. Aubrey Cole coming in fast, trying to find some support. No one around the end boards. O'Neill with a quick play on it. Now Strom. The Reds can keep rushing like that. Four on two they just had. They're going to be dangerous in that offensive zone. Brault tries to find the pass into the center. His feet not quite connecting. Now right in front. Can't get to it fast enough. Melanie Drouse jumping on it. Taylor Delahaye. She can't get the shot off. The many ghost scoring chances happening on the ice so far. Those blocked shots really becoming a huge factor for UND getting in front of the play there. Francesca Monti trying to read the ice and finds Irwin. Teams appear to be loving to rim this puck around, but not always able to retrieve it and maintain that pressure. Good line protection from Olivia Hilton. some back and forth ping-ponging where both teams kind of losing it through that neutral zone. That was a big stretch pass to Natasha Athanasakos. She was in the right place, just couldn't get the puck on her stick. Monty back to Hilton. The Reds, you can hear them communicating on the ice, but still having a hard time getting together. Peyton Hargreaves, their captain, digging the puck off the boards. Lillian George has it. Now Scott, she can't control it, does. Takes the shot, it goes wide. O'Neill back down to Hargreaves, now to George. Wind up shot. It's far wide that time. George, though, able to get her stick on it again. Elders, she's got Irwin with her. They're gonna wait to set up something better with their team, McKnight. Now another chance, Cole this time. Working from behind, McKnight back, and into the glove of Woodland, but what a play by McKnight. That was beautiful, taking that nice, quick little backhand there. Can kind of catch the goalie off guard. Fortunately, Woodland has some beautiful, beautiful, quick reflexes there. Able to glove it down. Well, in the postseason, Caitlin McKnight has had one goal, two assists, including a two-point night in the uh, elimination game three against Queens. So she's a high-pressure performer as well for this team. Helping her out there, Nikki McDonald. Another star for the Varsity Blues, now Nystrom. She's working, working it for the Reds. As the loose puck goes trickling by Erica Fryer, Cole gets there first. How about the... The foot races in this one, Rihanna, and how you're feeling about the uh, intensity and intention. Toronto, especially in the first period, has Here's shown us. The shots are mostly coming from the circles as well. Yeah. Lots of them going over or wide of the net, though. So everybody's going to need to hone in a little bit more, put them on to the goalies, because not many shots here in the second period yet. I was one going to say, if the mission is to pepper, it's a slow start here in the second period, despite all of these back and forth, so much of it in the neutral zone. And then just getting picked up off the boards, Howland and Monty for Toronto. Finds Eagles with a quick move to Howland. Able to stay in the middle, but is quickly forced to the outside, and that'll be the Reds' turn to take it back. Picking it off the near wall. And again, that third pass, just half a step behind those Reds are. But we're seeing Toronto suffer the same problem as well. These two teams showing how evenly matched they are. Lillian George coming in, takes the shot. It's it caught a piece there of Omoto in front of Erica Fryer. There's been lots of skating in this game, but Difficult to set up their systems. Through the second here, we really haven't seen any system from either team. It's just kind of scramble, get the puck, and all of a sudden we're ping-ponging back and forth. 
Ashley Delahaye to Taylor this time. She was in a great position for it. Couldn't get the shot. Now Chan from the point. That catches the body of Hargreaves. What an effective block. They can't create, they can't generate offense off of it. From the near wall now, Jackson. Unable to carry that through, Chan. Lots of preference for sort of a backhand dumping. Dumping pass to get it yep. down deep. There's the fresh legs for Toronto. Monty looking back as Bailey McMaster puts some pressure on Bailey McMaster from Regina, Saskatchewan, playing for UNB. Now Athana Sackos, she's got some room. She takes a shot. Quick save by Woodland, read it all the way through. And Irwin trying to work it through the feed. Eagles down. Starting to move it a little bit more around is Toronto, but they're getting caught up along those low boards. It seems like they're not both teams having balance. There's a chance though, and it's easily into the glove of Woodland. CBC Sports is the home of University Sports in Canada. Catch the best U Sports men's hockey teams as they face off in the GFL 2024 Men's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy live from Madame Athletic Center in Toronto. The action is underway on CBC Chase the Glory. We'll be back. It's 1-1 UNBU of T. Less than half or, yeah, less than half to go in the second period. Vous avez le pouvoir de provoquer le changement au sein de notre climat. Inside Merlis Belcher place in Saskatoon. The 2024 GFL Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy. UNV U of T tied at one, how they entered the middle frame. And now the Reds hot off a defensive zone draw, coming in fast. Oideman down low, trying to work it off the goal line. But this has been the story of the game. These back and forth chances, not really generating the type of offense that they're looking for. No, no team is, neither of them are able to really kind of finish into that offensive zone either way. They're getting it in or they're missing that third pass. They're finding that they're half a step behind these passes. Well, Strom, she's going to try. What a move by Chan there. Heads up, understanding to get in front. Feels like the speed of the game has changed a little bit from that first frame. The tempo has slowed down quite a bit between both teams. We're get another penalty call here. Yeah, an interference call this time. So this could be the change of tempo that perhaps sparks something. It was after, after the first power play that goals got scored. And it'll be a power play for UNB. They're second of the game. Yep. They have a pretty strong power play, so it'll be a great opportunity for them to do some work here into the offensive and see if they can exploit the Toronto defense a little bit here. So Eileen McEwen is the one keeping a seat in the penalty box, which is also a big loss for Toronto on the, on the kill. She's just an opportunistic player as well, able to jump on any chances. This could be, though, something to watch for is how do you play shorthanded? What are you able to do? perhaps generate a surprise attack the other way. Right now, you and me looking to get the lead for the first time this game. Perhaps a confidence booster. 
Someone needs something here to reignite the fire either way. One of these teams needs to do it. And that was an easy little, well, seemingly easy play for Toronto, but here's that, what we were talking about, shorthanded coming in, takes a shot, McDonald, and why not? You got that's nothing to lose when you're shorthanded. Exactly, that speed coming through you, that's just so beautiful to see out of the Toronto players. She, of course, had her teammate with her there, both of them just kicking it up a gear. And now they're gonna get that uh, puck drop down in the offensive zone. Why not on a penalty kill? So Mickey McDonald, eight goals through the regular season in 31 games, but two of them were game-winning goals too. So she knows right when the game is on the line how to get how to get things going. And we've got plenty of hockey to play, but in a game that's expected to be a defensive stronghold, that second goal could be where things stand. The go-ahead goal could be the winner that either team needs to go forward and punch their ticket into the semifinals. Short-handed, Toronto wins that face-off in their in the offensive zone. And of course, they'll, they'll still play it safe and bring back Trussler. is circling their quick work now by Katie McKenna to Trussler. And they get stopped. Trussler with two short-handed goals in the postseason alone. So this team has certainly been working on its penalty kill. They've had lots of opportunities to do that. We were 88, around 88% in the regular season. But the Reds, all this talk about shorthanded is also leaving them without a chance here to really get going and set up in the Toronto zone. And just like that, Toronto has managed to kill over half of the time on the penalty and also generate a chance. Now Keenan, she fires that one, one of the hardest shots of the night so far. She got the Reds on the board just 49 seconds after Toronto in the first period. We have seen a hat trick already in this tournament, in the very first game, so anything is possible. That's still the highest scoring game by a single team so far, 6 1. Tatum to James. Waterloo, yeah, Tatum James. Keenan with a shot, it's gloved by Fryer. But that was one of the best, if not the best, scoring chance that we have seen set up deliberately by UNB. Yes, nice to see them set up a fantastic play and get a really good shot. She had almost nobody in front of her to take that opportunity. Just four seconds left on the power play. Still a little bit of a chance for them. Hargreaves just trying to work it off his game. Fling it towards the net. Not quite in that. Oh, that was a juicy opportunity in transition for McEwen right out of the penalty box. You always got to watch for those moments as Toronto, well, they can't set up. The chase is on. Hargreaves, it does feel like a little bit of a spark now. Even more intensity and speed between both these teams after that power play. Good penalty kill by Toronto. Fantastic penalty kill. They had some nice chances on that shorthanded rush they had. Nice speed coming down the ice. It's kind of what we were seeing quite a bit from them in that first period. So maybe they needed that little bit of a talking to with the media timeout. Kind of pull yourselves together, girls. Pull your bootstraps up and let's be the team that we know to be. Well, both these teams, the most well rested of the tournament, playing in this final quarter final. But that can also go both ways. You've had a chance to sort of look at everything and soak it all in, and there's a lot of energy and emotion given. Now Chan winds up. That one deflected off in front. And UMB now trying to throw their weight around as well on the ice. Coming in fast. Carter down low. Chan with support for Toronto. Red still in it, just tucked below the goal line. What pressure. It's two on one back there. Good gritty board battles down below the net into the corners, going both ways. Nobody's letting up. Cross eyes pass though. It's soft to so Sophie Grawbarger who has an assist on the night. And that's taken away this time by the Reds and Cole getting in there even without a stick. It's effective for Toronto. Forces you be back to the outside. They've had little chances sort of in the middle of the ice. Leading to all these war battles. And 
that would have been a fantastic chance for them. But just that third pass, again, half a step behind, half a step behind. So they need to find that other gear and just speed a little bit harder. Bring a little bit more intensity into this. Quick work by the Reds to at least push the puck back into the Toronto end. But for all that effort, it's it's been a quick step for McDonald and there a big shot by McKnight. Woodland flashing the leather. He's dialed in. Woodland now with 14 saves so far and 10 on the other side for Fryer. Which is fantastic. Still really, really low for shots. You know, both these teams sitting at about 30 each generally. So to have that low, you're not going to have many opportunities. You can't score goals if you're not getting shots on net. Like I had said previously, they're going wide. They're going over the net. Block shots going up, though, too. You yeah. need 11. Toronto has six. Lots of factors to that. I mean, right now, U of T is pretty much on par for their average shots on goal that they had throughout the season. Although not quite, because 15 would be the halfway point. But it's a little different when you get to the national stage. Omoto trying to work it around to McKenna. Intercepted this time by the Reds. There's a lot of skating, a lot of intensity, and both these two teams will be playing tomorrow. So the rest early on also means quick turnarounds. Back and forth, Hargreaves in the slot, tries to shoot. Omoto doing the work there for Toronto, an unsung hero in that moment. Omoto doing a fantastic job to get herself into play, break up those plays, and just being a really solid player so far this evening. Oh, and Omoto looking back. She's got elders with her. That's the puck movement Toronto's been looking for. Creating these chances in the middle of the ice that Thanosakos to Chan. Back around, they go Cole from the point. He's got Irwin down low along with Thanosakos. Solid defensive play by the Reds, closing out opportunities in space in those end boards. Going to be again, like I said, doing a way better job of keeping Toronto to the outside, not letting those girls, not letting the varsity blues kind of get in tight towards the goaltender like we saw in the first period. It was a good play by Irwin to get it down low, but it would have been even sweeter if her teammate could have picked it up in the slot. Now Toronto again, yeah, just able to keep it. A little bit of pressure maintained here in the red zone. And Jessica Monty was trying to play that one. It is offside. Gives them some breathing room. Still a fast-paced period. Yep. So much of it has just been that back and forth. Quick ping-ponging, you know, breaking up those plays through the neutral zone. And not many frozen pucks. No, not at all. Well, of course, shots yeah. are going to tell you look that. At that. Yeah, when you look at the, the story of the night so far, 15-11, Toronto with the edge. And a quick note on the crowd inside Merlis Belcher Place. There's lots of red, and I will say this about New Brunswick, their fans travel really well, but this is a big moment. You're a hooking call. And the University of Toronto, Taylor Trussler, who had an exceptional penalty kill we just saw, in actually generating offense for her team. So this is an even bigger power play for UMD. They're third of the night, and now not having to face Taylor Trussler in blue. This could be the moment. Less than two and a half minutes left in this frame, so great way to generate some momentum to close it out, Keenan. To George, kept by Hargreaves. This line, they know how to score on the power play. George, yeah, gets the back of the net there. Swoop T penalty kill has shown its strength tonight so far. Hargreaves, wind up, George, it's wide. Fire got a piece of it. This could be a big confidence boost as well for the Varsity Blues heading into the locker room. Especially with Trussler being in the box. You know you gotta get to work for your captain. 
usually leads this unit in so many ways. Monty off the wall. Support from Eagles. It's an Howland. A lot of bodies in the corner there. Now the officials not wanting to spend too much time with that, right? Knowing, okay, this there's no budging, there's no movement here, let's reset this. But that can be such a tricky call too when it comes to when there is or isn't that movement. Yeah. What is enough grit in the corner and what is too much? It has felt consistent so far through these two periods. Elders in the middle for Toronto as Oideman tries to get on it and McKenna actually <laughs> they feeling that puck off her back. So it's a good clear for the Varsity Blues. Katie McKenna. And she'll try to hog that puck as much as she can, keep it away. Great stick work by her. That's the thing, we're starting to see even more of the skill of the individual players now that they've kind of warmed up to not only one another, but each other. Their teams get settled here in the second period. It is a power play for New Brunswick. We just have about 30 seconds left of it. And the University of Toronto doing a fantastic job. Here's a chance in the slot. Fryer bobbles it up high. Oideman, patient, 20 seconds left on this power play. They work it around Keenan. Strom tries to get her stick on it, but the Varsity Blues coming through big time in this penalty kill. They only allowed two power play goals in their seven playoff games. To get to this point, we're back to even strength. Heading into the locker room, Toronto will have had very successful penalty kills this period. Still tied at one. Gotta feel good about that effort. Oh, of course, I mean, they're spending more time on their penalty kill down in the UNB zone than they are in their own. They've got great speed getting that puck and just managing to keep it away from UNB. So great kills by Toronto. in the red zone. But now, UNB with some time and a chance. George is trying to work it around Cole. Can't. It's taken back the other way. Final seconds here in the second period. Takes a shot. It's hard and wide. And that'll close out the second period. Score still the same as we entered the middle frame. Tied at one. Shots on goal. There weren't many in the second period. Started tied at nine. Now U of T has 16 to New Brunswick's 13. But truly the story of the second period is the penalty kill of the Toronto Varsity Blues. CBC Sports is the home of University Sports in Canada. The best U Sports women's volleyball teams are in Hamilton for this week's 2024 U Sports Women's Volleyball Championship. Catch all the action exclusively on the CBC Gem, cbcsports.ca, the CBC Sports app, and CBC Sports YouTube. U Sports on CBC, chase the glory. Glory, we are headed into the second intermission. Still tied at one, UNB, U of T, fighting for a shot and playing for a medal. We'll be back with more. It's that moment again, the one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite, of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory, is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais, quand toutes les chances sont contre toi, when you can't push one more second, chase the glory. Viseo. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, 
for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. The exchange was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> to inspire and impact the climate. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. An intermission inside Burles, Belcher plays in Saskatoon for the final quarterfinal of the GFL 2024 U-Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy. Still a tied at one New Brunswick and University of Toronto through 40 minutes. Every year, U Sports presents a series of major honors to the top student athletes in each sport. Well, here are the 2024 U Sports Hockey Service, Hockey Community Service Award nominees and winners of the 2024 U Sports Player of the Year. The nominees for the Marion Hillard Award to the student who excels in hockey, academics, and community involvement are Les candidats pour le prix Marion Hillard pour l'excellence dans le hockey, les études, et l'engagement communautaire sont Des sports universitaires de l'Atlantique, from the AUS Shailen McFarlane, University of Prince Edward Island, Université de l'Île du Prince Edouard Du réseau du sport étudiant du Québec, from the RSEQ Emmy Fecto, Université Concordia University Du sport universitaire de l'Ontario, from the OUA, Emily Baxter, Toronto Metropolitan University, Université Métropolitaine de Toronto, et de l'Association West Canadienne, from Canada West, Jenna Merck, University of Regina, Université de Regina. La lauréate du prix Marion Hillard pour l'engagement communautaire est... The winner of the Marion Hillard Award for Community Service is... Emmy Fecto, Université Concordia University. The nominees for the Broderick Trophy as the U Sports Outstanding Women's Hockey Player of the Year are A nomination pour le trophée Broderick comme athlète de l'année U Sport en hockey féminin, des sports universitaires de l'Atlantique, from the AUS, Lillian George, University of New Brunswick, Université de la Nouveau Brunswick, du réseau du sport étudiant du Québec, from the RCQ, Gabrielle Santer, Université Bishops University, du sport universitaire de l'Ontario, from the OUA, Katie Chomiak. Nipissing University, Université de Nipissing, et de l'Association West Canadienne, from Canada West, Cameron Drever, University of Saskatchewan, Université de la Saskatchewan. La lauréate du trophée Broderick décerné à la joueuse de l'année en hockey féminin U-Sport est... The winner of the Broderick Trophy as the U-Sports Player of the Year in Women's Hockey is... Gabrielle Santer, Université Bishops University. in U Sports and right now it's a 1-1 tie New Brunswick and University of Toronto through 40 minutes inside Merlis Belcher Place. You're watching U Sports on CBC.
FNPA and indigenous communities are working together to develop a cleaner energy workforce, which is crucial to achieving a net zero energy future by 2050. Meaningful indigenous engagement and consultation are essential for this goal to be realized. The vision is to pursue energy sovereignty by expanding wind, solar, energy storage, and new nuclear technologies across Canada. Collaboration and collective efforts are necessary to decarbonize our economy, particularly in regions such as Alberta and Saskatchewan. Become a valued general or industry member and join us in this important work today. FNPA, the pathway to powerful opportunities. Of winning behind us that means a lot of winning numbers numbers like over 1200 organizations funded and 12,000 groups supported winning numbers like 6 million given away annually in community grants winning numbers like 196 athletes sent to Olympic and Paralympic Games and the winningest number of all the 1.4 billion dollars given back through sport culture and recreation and we're just getting started <laughs> Can you tell us your experience with online bullying? When I was younger, the girls started to pick on me. I felt really alone because I just had no one to talk to. We have a little surprise for you. I've always been drawn to Narissa for her calm, cool energy. She's kind, she's compassionate. I hope that one day I can be half the woman that Narissa is today. That's really meaningful to me. <laughs> your words have impact. Be kind online. At Viterra, we believe in the power of connection. Our world-leading agriculture network connects producers and consumers to supply top quality food ingredients each and every day. Our team takes great pride in working closely with farmers to help feed the world. It's something we've been doing for over 100 years. And as an industry leader, we're dedicated to playing a critical role in meeting the needs of a growing world. Because together, we're stronger and achieve more. Parce que le sport, c'est bien plus que des résultats. C'est aussi des analyses et des dossiers qui nous plongent au cœur d'un univers complexe et en mutation. C'est vraiment incroyable. Suivez les actualités sportives sur RadioCanada.ca et sur l'appli Info. U Sports on CBC, presented by the Championnat U Sport à Radio Canada. Une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the government of Canada. Nike, just do it. Fitner, Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. Pierre, partenaire des prix de l'entraîneur de l'année U Sport. Veraburn, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979. Partenaire du sport universitaire depuis 1979. Baron, exclusive supplier of U Sports Championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusive des bagues des championnats U Sport. By Connect Energy, proud presenting partner of this U Sports Championship. Par Connect Energy, fier partenaire de ce championnat U Sport. And by GFL, proud title partner of the 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship. Par GFL, fier partenaire en titre du championnat de hockey féminin U Sport 2024.
Welcome back to U Sports on CBC and our coverage of the GFL 2024 U Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy. I am Daniela Ponticelli alongside Brianna Kaminsky. We're tied at one University of New Brunswick, the higher seed, third seed, a U.S. champion, University of New Brunswick Reds taking on the University of Toronto Varsity Blues, the number six seed coming into this, the OUA finalist at one Rihanna we have seen a number of games so far in this quarterfinal round in this exact position just tied heading into the third period actually game one I think was the biggest surprise in the third period tied at one it was so back and forth heavy defensive battle between Waterloo and St. FX and then wow did they ever pour it on in the third in that last 10 minutes of the third Waterloo managed to net five goals Woo! to come ahead so I mean being tied 1-1 isn't the worst thing going into a third <laughs> period here there's lots of opportunity and that was the same case this morning with the uh, Montreal Caravans and the uh, BC Thunderbirds it was tied at two and Montreal was able to pull away netting two goals towards the end of that third period as well winning it 4-2 so still plenty of hockey to play it's just which team is going to come out in the third with more intensity who is going to be able to ignite that fire a little bit more because we saw a little bit of a softer second period coming in you know the first period everybody came out they had a head full of steam but that second was a little bit more passive both ways yeah and maybe it was because they came out with such speed and then they were forced to go end to end so much and that could be the difference maker as to how this third period will shape up it's certainly not a matchup that was ever built to be a high scoring affair both these two teams showing their defensive skills throughout the postseason but one edge that toronto might have here is their head coach vicky sonohara who uh, canadian fans will know very well three-time olympic medalist a trailblazer pioneer for women's hockey just a quick little list of her uh, accolades three-time U Sports Women's Hockey Coach of the Year, the last three seasons coming into this one. Wow. Two-time Olympic gold, 2002 Salt Lake City, and then in uh, Italy, 2006. And then she won silver as well in 1998. That was when women's ice hockey first became an Olympic sport. And she's also a seven-time world champion. And we talked about her being a trailblazer. She was part of that very first world championship back in 1990. So Vicky Zanara, has the chops when it comes to hey here's what we need to do to get going this is an elimination game yes you get to play tomorrow but do you want to play for fifth or do you want to play for potential gold that is what's at stake here and i think heading into this third period that's the type of intensity that fans will want to see UNB has a lot of support here in saskatchewan Tons so it's a really here. really important thing and by the way, all weekend long championships happening across many sports and CBC Sports is the home of University Sports in Canada. The best U Sports men's volleyball teams will battle for the 2024 U Sports Men's Volleyball Championship from Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario. Catch the action exclusively on CBC Gem, cbcsports.ca, the CBC Sports app and CBC Sports YouTube. U Sports on CBC, chase the glory. That's right, everybody fighting for a national title. UNB Red, the closest they've gotten is the third, the bronze medal game, the third game. <laughs> the third, uh, yeah, but uh, bronze, and they fell to Saskatchewan, the hosts of this year. They fell 4 nothing. It was a shutout win for the Huskies, and it was a big emotional game for the Huskies for sure, but for the Reds as well. This was a team six years ago, or rather, this is their sixth season, but in 2000. 18, they finally came back into the AUS after a human rights complaint had to be filed because the women's team back in 2008 had been downgraded from a varsity team to a club team. And so there was support to return the women's team back into the AUS and they got that. And really it was helmed by great work from their head coach, Sarah Hillworth, who's on maternity leave as mentioned earlier. And so Kyle McDonald is stepping in, but Kyle McDonald very familiar with the program. But to have this kind of success, Rihanna, three AUS titles, really since sort of the middle of this return to now, it would be a great finish for them to end up back in the championship round. Of course, and you've got to imagine that's what was being said in the dressing room in between this second and third period is, hey, we are looking to go to the medal round. We need to go all the way to do that. At center ice, 
B. McKnight. Not winning it clean there for the Varsity Blues, but the UNB Reds jumping to it. Sending it down, of course, graduating players as well. These moments are so big in this final period of regulation, at least, will be a big one for these teams. What side of the bracket do you want to be on? Taylor Tressler, fifth year coming in. She gets a shot. Seemingly easy save there by Woodland, but what a throw on net by Nikki McDonald. It might have been that locker room pep talk, or perhaps just a moment to think what better we could have done in the second period. But to come away with it without any further goals scored for either side certainly could be looked at as a win, especially as U of T had to battle through the penalty kill a couple times. And what a successful penalty kill they had in that second period, of course, spending quite a bit of time in the UNB end, even though they were on the PK. McKenna trying to jump to it. Nystrom around to Strom this time. That was a heads up play by McEwen trying to settle the puck, but it's poked free by Nystrom. Keenan plays it back to Carter, using the boards to get these passes off quick to one another. There's an art to that as well, Rihanna, being able to use the boards effectively in a barn that you're not familiar with. Big time. You don't know how the boards are going to react to bounces. You don't know how the corners are going to react. First time for the Reds and for the Varsity Blues to be inside Merlis Belcher Place. It's the first time ever the University of Saskatchewan is hosting this national tournament and now setting up a chance, taking a shot. Oideman into the glove of Fryer. Check that. Lauren O'Neill doing the work a second year out of Ontario for the UNB Reds them to kind of finish that play getting a little bit closer to the Reds on the goaltender there kind of saying hey how are you we're here we're still playing Peyton Hargreaves at the dot doesn't win it clean and now the Varsity Blues adding some speed McDonald shaking off George there of sustained control with the, with the puck on the stick. It's been hard to come by in this game where so many pokes now. McKnight, what a strip, what a play by Lillian George to do that. The puck right off the stick. And there is as well such great beauty in a big defensive battle, but this is some solid defensive play, stronger than the first two frames. At least early on. Early on. Only three minutes in. <laughs> early in George trying to extend her stick around. Now Smith. Back around Reiner. And again, just that back and forth between these two teams. Not really seeing much production either way. Toronto did come out starting a little bit strong in this third period here, but Last couple minutes, UNB spending more time down in there. Now a chance coming in. And that one stopped short once more. Jackson fires it over to Reiner and just whipped back by Elders. Good call on Woodland to step out of her net and play that puck, get a little bit more involved. The goaltenders are not really seeing that many shots, so getting out and playing the puck gets them involved keeps their confidence up. Nystrom to Oideman this time. And what a big interruption there by Aubrey Cole, it's the fifth year for Toronto. She doesn't even need the speed, she just has that physical presence to loose that puck. It's gonna help out Chan. Carry it. With a flip play over, finds Katie McKenna this time. Now McKenna with some speed into the middle. Takes a far side, shoots. Trying to create some offense. Crossing through with some movement. UFT knowing they're gonna have to take Kendra Woodland's eyes 
away. She's been so solid, Olivia Hilton, and that's poke three by Drost. Can't jump on the puck fast enough. Fresh out. Here comes Vala, so fast. She's gonna take a wide, looking for the pass, can't get it, wrap around, forced to the wide outside. Smith can't handle it there on the blue line. It's a bit of a wobbly puck. Yeah. It's a thing all easier said than done when it comes to controlling it. Both teams have struggled, sort of settling it down. Toronto, they like to get back to some of that sustained pressure they had early on. Grawbarger, he loses it in the red zone. UT came out so quick, so fast, lots of pressure in that first period. They need to get back to some of that, spending more time down in the red zone. So quick trip back in time for the UNB, going back to last year, and sorry Reds fans, sometimes hard to hear. They were the number four seed, they're the number three seed this year, so still AUS champions both times, and they lost out in two games. They fell 4-1, the number five seed, Montreal Caraban. So the Caraban just loved to upset in the quarterfinals. They did that again earlier today over UBC. Seven seed over the second, and there's a shot. It's kicked away by Woodland. We'll go for it one more time here. But then, of course, the Reds met the Toronto Varsity Blues in that consolation semifinal where they fell 4-1. So both of their games are out scored 4-1. Right now, this game tied 1-1. So UNB we're trying to dial into some of that experience. A number of their players, of course, returning from that championship go at it last year, Lillian George among them. Now Hargreaves as well. Lillian George, such a key player. She's been all over this ice, using her body, breaking up plays, just really getting involved. And doing everything, my goodness. Yes, end to end. Trying to control it along the line. Nystrom can, it's offside. She's not super happy about that call, didn't really. Now, Rihanna, you have been on every single call so far. So this is the fourth quarter final for you. When it comes to sort of the pace that you've seen, how would you rate this? I'm putting you on the spot. How would you rate this one compared to some of the other games you've seen, just in terms of the tempo and kind of how the teams are playing? The tempo has been kind of up and down here. I would say maybe a little bit on the slower side compared to some of those other games we've seen, you know. Even the first game, Waterloo and the X-Women, yeah. you know, it was a 1-1 game going all the way into the third period, but really lots of speed, lots of opportunity, high amount of shots. We're still only sitting at 13 and 16 shots, getting close to the middle of the third frame here. So low scoring, low opportunities both ways, and you know, you can't win a game if you don't get shots on net. Right now, shots on net have not budged no. at the, since the start of the third period. It's not really on the in-house track, or maybe one more for the University of Toronto, but that's saying something in a game where, like I said earlier, that second goal might be the difference maker. Both teams have kind of struggled to take it side to side. The Reds were so fast on jumping on that opportunity after the Varsity Blues scored and taking away that thunder and that momentum. There's a shot, it's just wide, Grawbarger. Gotta watch for her though, she does set up players very well, Sophie Grawbarger. There's a big shot, sharp angle, swift work by McMaster in the slot, force it to the outside. Probably the best opportunity we've seen thus far in the third period here. Yeah, and it just, Unable to jump right on it, Toronto was, but it was a great effort. Sophie Grawbarger had 11 assists through the regular season for the Varsity Blues. Now Keenan, she got the goal earlier for the Reds. Murdoch from the line. They'll fly it off the far side wall. Looking again for some support, Murdoch to Keenan. Drost. Now, quick work by the Reds as they're trying to work off some speed. Vala getting bumped off the puck, too. She's got some quick feet there, yeah, Vala. Oh, well. Gotta use what you have to your advantage. She's got that speed. She is a shorter 
player coming in at 5-1. I think possibly the shortest one on the ice. Now Nystrom, she gets bumped off the puck by McKenna this time, and now right in front of Fryer, it's loose, it's just wide. We saw the best chance for Toronto earlier, about a minute ago, and that was the best chance for the Reds to break this stalemate on the scoreboard. Getting a chance up close with Fryer. Lillian George, quick to it. Look to Lillian George to play some more minutes likely here in the third period as well. Top scorer, just all over the ice. She's such a 200 foot player going end to end and being so productive. Now the Reds have some energy. Hargreaves finds Keenan, shoots and it's kicked away. There was a little bit of a bounce to it too. A little redirect there now. Toronto, Gra Grabarger getting by the Reds. A batted back, swift defensive play. And sticks galore as well. Hilton to Delahey. Oideman gets a piece of that puck. Taylor Delahey, she doesn't get the pass back. Oideman doing all she can. Now setting up Reiner. Reiner forced to the outside, takes the shot. Quick save by Erica Fryer, but we're starting to see shots on goal here, Rihanna. We're starting to see a little bit more heat, a little bit more steam both sides that way. Now it's the, we've crossed the halfway uh, point here of the third period, still with that 1-1 one -one tie, which we entered, well, we left the first period, rather. Now, McKnight, shot, turned away by Woodland. And into the corner it goes. No one there for the second chance. Trussler can't reach it. Haley Jackson makes it far side. Working around, disrupted by Eagles. Sent back, Varsity Blues quick to clear. Taking the safe way as well, just to carry it out is Monty, dump it down, Keenan. Keenan, another player who's been all over the ice as well this evening. And Nikki McDonald was right near the doorstep. She's trying to set up down low, but now circling. Melanie Drost forced to dump it down. Fresh legs out now for the Reds. No time set up in the offensive zone. And the clock just keeps winding down. Whistles have been at a premium. Just like that, Erica Fryer will Send us to break. It's a one-one tie. New Brunswick University of Toronto. You're watching U Sports on CBC. In the heart of Saskatoon, where the winters are long, hockey is not just a sport, it's a way of life. Behind every team, there's a community that supports them. At Connect Energy, we're proud to be a Saskatoon-based company that powers local businesses with natural gas options to help them thrive. We're excited to sponsor the 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship. Join us in supporting local businesses and the future of hockey. The home of university sports in Canada, the best U Sports women's volleyball teams are in Hamilton this week. 2024 U Sports Women's Volleyball Championship. You can catch all the action exclusively on CBC Gems, CBC Sports.ca, the CBC Sports app, and CBC Sports YouTube. U Sports on CBC Chase the Glory. That's also where you're watching the GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy. 8.45 left in the third period. It was a 1-1 tie after the first 20 minutes. Goals that were 
return basically back to back 45 seconds 49 seconds apart Ashley Delahaye opening it up for Toronto and then Mackenzie Keenan responding for the University of New Brunswick and now trying to dig deep and get the go ahead the Reds will come out a little bit slower but now adding some speed both teams really feeling that intensity knowing what's at stake a shot at the championship bracket playing for a medal or back down to the consolation rounds where the best you can finish is fifth now smith around trying to create something off the end boards hargreaves the captain is also rushing to it now eileen McEwen, she falls down and toronto varsity blues have a chance here as they work around quickly Coming in close to Kendra, and what a backhand shot. What a bigger stop by Kendra Woodland. Hargreaves takes it away the other side. I mean, that was a great chance all on her own. Katie McKenna. Beautiful coming down with speed, dangling around those defenders. And she delegated Taylor, that one. Off the body now of Nystrom, who will carry it over. Taking some fewer chances with long passes now. Both teams knowing the importance of these minutes that are winding down seven and a half to go in regulation. And possession of the puck going to be so key. You don't want to be making passes where there's a step ahead of you. Okina well, with a good long shot, but couldn't get a second chance there. For her teammates in front, Kina will send it back. And this is where championship experience matters and both these two teams were in this very tournament just last year but so many more rookies on this reds team eight in total and then a bit of a mix for toronto plenty of third year players but also plenty of second year first year so still quite new to this experience and experience is so key we saw that in a few of the other games where you know waterloo now right in front on a wrap around that gets sent back with mcdonald and mcknight trying to make something happen below the goal line there's that experience they're going to look for it from trussler as well fifth year and again yeah waterloo kind of being the exception there where they were just happy to come in and manage to get that big 6-1 win over st effects yeah, their first time at Nationals, but in talking more with people who know the Waterloo Warriors quite intensely, they also have a pretty veteran roster and, and came close a number of times in the OUA. So they've been chomping at the bit, getting ready for that opportunity, but it is always something to actually see the team seize that moment. And they were the higher seed, but that doesn't always mean anything in this tournament where the first four will go to the champions, but then the, la the remaining four are sort of in where they will not be in the same exact quarterfinal matchup with a conference opponent right you don't want it to have two canada west teams kind of on the same same pathway exactly and talking about seeds maybe not mattering is the bc thunderbirds in montreal mm -hmm. today montreal coming away with that one as well. there's cole up high she'll catch the glass that time Seeds is one thing, but you are always, it's just one game and in hockey, these teams know what that means. And of note is that the University of Toronto, despite coming through as OUA finalists, they dropped all of their game one. So two kind of to set up the Macaw Cup and then in the Macaw Cup itself, which is a one game final to take it all, they fell. So this is the game you don't want to be falling behind or chasing and right now at least the score on the board even at one for Toronto fans but if your go-to is losing that first game you're going to be in the consolation round God, it's so tough right the the mindset for a tournament like this and the Reds are are doing doing what they've been doing all game just trying to get it out of their end they are doing it faster lots of intensity but we're now down to the final five minutes in regulation mcknight to eagles no quarterfinal has gone overtime yet mcknight with a shot it's wide red quick that one off the blade up high smith short passes 
Elders nearly takes it away. Can't quite. Scott back to it. Now a chance for the Reds in the slot. Francesca Monti's in the way. You're not getting by. Stripped away on that opportunity. Just batting at the puck, just trying to get at it. Now Keenan, she's been so clutch for the UNB Reds. Mackenzie Keenan, a second year as well, so had some experience, saw her team in last year's battle through Nationals, where they finished seventh. Now Strom. And that's the other thing, the UNB Reds unable to get any wins last year at this level. They played just two games. That's what happens in the consolation bracket. If you don't get to that consolation final, there's a shot by Cole. She'll take it all day long just to kind of keep it in there. Aubrey Cole, she's a defender as well. 5'10", big body on the ice from Sarnia, Ontario. Go for it once more. Vala tries to poke that puck free. Now Vala chasing down, but howling to it. Quick work by Marissa Vala once again. Five foot one, but she has such a presence out there. She's very tenacious, so quick on her feet. She's trying to work in tandem here with Lillian George. Every time they try to set up, they're forced to go back the other way. Hargreaves says not this time. Let's bring it back. 240 left here in regulation. Still tied up at one. Both these teams, they turned it up a little bit here in the third, but now a bigger chance. Sophie Grabarger alone and in front. Back end, she scores! Sophie Grabarger on her own gets Toronto what feels like a massive second goal. Of course, she had an assist on that first goal. Couple points for her this evening. Wow, excitement for U of T. Just nice and patient with those hands. You know, we kind of talked. Look at that replay. Back into the blocker side. Besting, Kendra Woodland, beautiful, beautiful, but so patient with those hands of hers. You know, we talked about that backhand, maybe U of T using it a little bit too much, but it's coming back to bite us because it paid off right there. When used correctly, as is the yes. case in that one where Kendra Woodland was not quite expecting it. And so now, UNB finding itself where it was just early in this game before they were able to come back and get that equalizer. They did it 49 seconds after Toronto's first goal. What can they create here? They're gonna need to move fast if they wanna get back to a tie. Stay in this one. The Varsity Blues send it around. Right in front, that one nearly pushed in by Lillian George. And they pulled Woodland from the goal. And so far in this tournament, the empty net has not worked in favor of the teams trying to get some opportunities. But Oideman, she could change that. Loose puck, and there's that empty net for the Reds. We approach the final minute of play in Toronto. The big 2-1 lead right now. Keenan settles it back. Hargreaves, they're patient here, knowing they can't get that puck loose. Forced around. Toronto poking at it. As the seconds wind down. There's an empty net, a juicy empty net on the other side. The Reds desperate to tie this. Big grit in these last couple minutes here. Kind of reminded themselves, hey, we got to keep this lead. They're still fighting for it. O'Neal from the points. Far side, one timer through traffic in front. Digging at it. It's still alive. There's the whistle. That was the intensity UNB 
was looking for the fans are just covering their mouths they're trying to figure out okay we've got 18.9 seconds to tie this thing back up we're gonna get a timeout here called looks like this is this is the pressure they had the game to kind of go back and forth that second period you know when you go back and look at film you might say okay there were opportunities here where we could have dialed up that intensity but now it comes down to this getting the jump getting the equalizer at six on five you pulled kendra woodland from net Ryder's been fantastic all evening you know facing well 16 shots on goal of course getting support in the slot from her team both teams have been really dialing up the block shots but U of T accounting for seven block shots but UNB really coming through for Woodland all game they have 13 block shots this is where they've got to do what they can to get the shots into the back of the net while Toronto 18 seconds to moving on this is championship round where they prove we are a heavy defensive team Oh, and there's a loose buck. George finds it. Back to Keenan. But now the battle for it. Remember, empty net down low. That puck's not going to touch the net, but it's going to take up time. And we're final five seconds here as the Reds battle try to get to it. Kept out of the empty net, but the Varsity Blues with the victory. A 2-1 win over the University of New Brunswick Reds. The number six seed Toronto pulling the upset on the AUS champions heading into the championship bracket. Narrowly avoiding overtime, of course. Very sure. narrowly. All of these games where they've been tied, they've been just the dying last 10 minutes of the third. The Toronto celebrating, rallying around Sophie Rawbarger, a two-point night for her, but of course getting the game-winning goal 17 minutes, 39 seconds into the third period, helped by Caroline Eagles. And that's what it took. It took a team effort, of course, to get going, and it all started. Toronto got that lead 12 minutes, 12 and a half minutes basically into the first period from Ashley Delahaye, helped by Grawbarger and Taylor Delahaye. Now the handshakes, but this has got to be upsetting for the Reds. I mean, they're AUS champions third years in a row. They want to get going, and it was just a tough test tonight. Great moments, though, especially in net. We have to talk about that, too. We knew it was going to be a defensive battle, and Erica Fryer coming in clutch, especially on some of the flurry of activity from the Reds early on. Big time, and even that flurry that they had in that third period, that was so clutch of her towards the end of it to keep it out and shut it down in this narrow, narrow game. Shots on goal favoring Toronto, 22 to 16. They get the upper edge on the scoreboard too, two to one. And so now Toronto will go on to face the UBC Thunderbirds. Tomorrow night, 7 p.m. local, that's six Pacific, nine Eastern on semifinal Saturday. Check that. Montreal Catabea, rather, 4-1, 4-2 win over UBC. Right now we're going to get ready for the Nike player of the game presentations. The UNB Reds, meanwhile, they'll gear up for a bit of an early start, earlier start than they would have liked tomorrow as they head into the consolation bracket. Their best finish would be fifth if they can make it all the way to Sunday. And Mackenzie Keenan, rightly so, being honored as player of the game, Nike player of the game. She was helped by April Reiner and Haley Jackson on that lone goal for the Reds. Understandably, the game-winning goal scorer, Sophie Rawbarger, also with an assist on that opening goal for Toronto. So both teams closing things out here in the quarterfinals in a very defensive fashion. The Reds will take on, they will take on the UBC Thunderbirds in that consolation semifinal starting 1 p.m. local, noon Pacific and 3 p.m. Eastern. 
so through the first four games of this tournament, Rihanna, how would you evaluate the level of play you've seen from these teams? This matchup tomorrow against Toronto and Montreal is going to be a tough one tomorrow evening. Toronto really is gonna to need to get a lot of rest because those caravans played earlier this morning. They had all evening. They're gonna have all day to rest coming in. It's gonna be a tough one for Toronto. They really are gonna to need to bring some grit. And of course, Waterloo and Concordia could go either way. Waterloo very, very hot right now, but Concordia coming in with that perfect season, they're gonna be looking to get into that gold medal bracket. A quick reminder, the action gets going. Semi-final Saturday, all four games, two consolation semis, two championship semis, but it all gets started with St. FX taking on the University of Saskatchewan Huskies, 9 p.m., 9 a.m. Pacific, and make that noon Eastern time. Final score tonight, 2-1. In regulation, Toronto Varsity Blues heading to the championship bracket, winning this quarterfinal over the University of New Brunswick Reds, the higher seed team in this game. So call it an upset, if you will, but Toronto fans happy with that final outcome. On behalf of Rihanna Kaminsky, our fantastic production team and U Sports, I am Daniela Ponticelli. Thank you for watching day two of the 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy on CBC.